Hi and welcome back to the Drive School. Today we are going to take a look at how to connect batteries, energy storage to an industrial grid or a city grid. There are basically two ways of doing this. One is with a grid converter and the other is with a DC converter. So we are going to take a look at should we select the grid converter or should we select the DC converter for our application? First, we are going to look at the grid converter, which is probably the most versatile of them. It's used for uh, shore connection. It's used for peak shaving on boarding ships. It can be used between batteries and city grid. It can be used as uh, interruptible power for um, AC grids many use of this. It consists of a frequency converter, but it also utilizes a sinus filter, LC filter, and a transformer. So we are connecting the AC part of the frequency converter to the city grid. And the elements needed here between the battery and the city grid is the frequency converter and inside we put the software application for the microgrid which is licensed. You will need a sinus filter, a choke and a capacitor and then the transformer and a little bit special for the transformer is that the impedance in the transformer need to be about four percentage or at least a little bit bigger than this part. Well isn't this just a very complex iPhone charger? Do the same. You have an AC side and your battery, just like my iPhone. Well, there is a huge difference. And that is, this system is bi-directional. You can force the energy to go into the battery or the battery to supply the AC grid. So this is more like um, energy conversion between DC directly to AC. The way that you control it is in two ways. You can select drooping on the frequency. Drooping on the frequency that is just like a diesel generator operates. The whole thing could be looked upon like a diesel generator on a ship. It means that you have a drooping frequency. When the current increase, when it contributes a lot to the load on the grid, well, the frequency start drooping off a little bit. You are not pushing the city grid that much anymore. Then the current will go down. So load drooping is the most simple way of sharing the load with other power sources. And it's um, drooping on the frequency for the active current. And of course the battery only say active current. And you also adjust the voltage for the reactive current. Very simplified. Frequency changes will give active current into the battery and voltage differences will give reactive current. Current that is 90 degree off the city grid and we are not so interested in the reactive current to keep it to a minimum. You can also run in something called isosynchronous mode. What is that? Well, then the application will synchronize its frequency to the city frequency. When they are totally synchronous, there will be no current going to the battery. Then you can give the frequency converter a reference telling, I need some amperes going in here. So you basically have like a power handle 
for current. And you can adjust the current to go into the grid or you can charge the battery. So then it is like a PLC controlled or operator controlled charger, which is bi-directional. Huge difference from my iPhone, which only can take power from one direction to the battery. But this application actually can go in both directions. Connecting a battery directly to the DC link of a frequency converter is only possible because the grid converter have a floating DC voltage. That means that the frequency converter doesn't control the DC voltage. The battery does. The battery voltage could be a wide range of voltages depending on the state of charge and depending on the load on the battery. So for this drive, which is a 500 volt frequency converter, the battery should be something between 550 volts and 820 volts. That is the minimum and maximum which it can handle on the DC link. A floating DC voltage means that the battery is the boss of the DC voltage on this side of the system. And the frequency converter basically only decide when to push current and when to draw current out of the battery. There is a transformer in this system. With active fronton you don't see transformer that much, but do you really need a transformer in this system? This is a common question we get from customers. And then remember the training course for common mode. In the training course for the common mode, we learned that you need a loose end in one of the system because the frequency converter creates this jumping voltage. Well, isn't the battery a loose end? You can let the star point rotate here. Well, the battery vendors don't like that we have a voltage that do this common mode. So to be sure that we don't have any common mode to the batteries, we have the loose end of the system here. You need a transformer basically so that the common mode can rotate in the transformer and then the battery will have a very, very easy and steady life without common mode. Also, we use this transformer for uh, transforming the voltage to our most ideal voltage to hit this window. So there will be calculations in the training course for the grid converter showing how to do this transformer. Also, the 4% impedance that we ask for in the transformer is to create a good LCL sinus filter which creates a much nicer sinus and according to the law power quality we need a transformer to do the quality of the power according to the en standards we are not creating dirty power we are actually powering iphones computers ship grids your house whatever and this system actually produce clean power the places we see the grid converter in use is typically when you retrofit ships with peak shaving energy storage. You put a huge battery on board in the ship to take peak loads from the ship grid so that your diesel generator don't see these big changes in power consumption to thrusters and other consumers. So this is a very, very nice peak shaver. It can also be used to produce an AC grid, so if you're making a battery boat, you could put a battery, 500 kilowatt hours or so, and you power your AC grid and your regular electrical diesel electric propulsion system can then be run on battery power. Another application where you see the grid converter a lot is in shore power. Then there is not a battery here then it's powered from the city and you are pushing power into ship and the frequency can be anything 60 hertz typically for ships 
So for shore power, this is uh, in widely use. And also there, use the transformer. Even though it's big and bulky, you need it.